Right, so what you have there was uh, No Hesitation by a combat player who has very nicely uh, licensed me some of his music, thank you very much for that, through this Sony XS1 uh, car speaker, which I recently purchased. So the plan is to put these in the van, I mean a giant hurry to do that, but uh, these are very old speakers, very nice speakers, uh, and they are a bit weird. Uh, they are an entirely metal case and they are absolutely solid indeed. If I try to lift this, ooh, this is like a solid three or four kilos worth of speaker. Uh, and I'm not sure if uh, it's uh, the case being a cast iron rather than aluminium, I'd imagine it being cast iron, or it's just got a ridiculously massive set of drivers in there making it this way. Uh, and I think we just uh, take these guys apart and have a look inside. I want to clean the potentiometers anyway to get these guys back in spec because they are a bit scratchy. Uh, so let's just go. I'm in a giant hurry so you don't give the benefit of a tripod. And here we go. And they come apart nicely with these six screws around the front plate. I haven't had a sneak peek so let's see what we have over. That is rather massive. Ooh, and that is looking like a rather big magnet too. That? Oh. The speaker is actually part of the enclosure. Just look at that, there's no actual driver. It's just a magnet and speaker components bolted onto the actual faceplate. That's fascinating. That's absolutely gorgeous. Oh wow, I've never seen this done before. Just look at that. That's amazing. That is amazing. And that is a lot of weight in this front plate. I can tell you this is like pretty much half of the weight of a speaker. Let's put this gingerly down. And... And that is easily, easily another kilo. That is, uh, that has to be you cast uh, uh, iron or steel of some sort. It's certainly not aluminium. It's uh, yeah, it doesn't sound aluminium at all. But that is, this woofer is fascinating. Wow! Just look at that. That's a beautiful construction. Good thing I saved these guys from lying around. This is unique, wow. And there's the potentiometer I want to get at. That's looking rather fancy as well. And uh, not a bad crossover. We've got uh, a choke 0.18 millihenries and a 39 microfarad cap. I think uh, those parts are going to be fine. But wow, I can't get over this woofer. I cannot get over this woofer. No, they do seem to have a foam surround, which hasn't gone bad yet, even though these are like your mid-80s speakers, so I'm not going to touch that, it's foam from the behind, so refoaming these is going to be a real problem when it does need to be done. You'd have to get the front grill off, but why? So the, the, that's the woofer, and you mount you made the tweeter to the woofer. <laughs> what an amazing design. And uh, it is gasketed with this, uh, by now, very, very hard rubber gasket. Better, better take that very carefully around. But yeah, I'm just going to clean the pot and do the same with the other one. Well, I guess I'm going to put this to use, but wow, that, that's an amazing design. All right, on close inspection, it does turn out I was lying to you. The woofer is not part of the entire front face, face assembly, uh, but rather it is only uh, this entire front assembly. Uh, but still, this entire thing, grill and all, is the woofer. Uh, but you can see that you've got a gasket between there, so the woof woofer does actually come out, which it's going to be very thankful when we get to refoaming these in probably a few years. But either way, just look at the systems engineering of this. It's just in just look at the gasket. 
Just look at it, it's like something you'd find in an automobile engine. So many little intricacies and crevices and details on it, and they've even gone to the effort of putting little padders there to keep everything in place and tight. And the gasket is even greased. I get, I keep getting some grease residue on it as I'm handling it. But wow, that is an amazing speaker. An absolutely amazing speaker. I am in love with this thing. Now, I am not going to take apart the ribbon tweet because I know these things are ridiculously fragile and I would not even want to risk anything getting out of alignment and ruining it. So, I'm sorry, but we're not going to be looking inside of this seemingly cast metal. Yeah, that could easily be cast metal box. Why? And you can see that these have not been in huge production runs. If you have a peak of a PCB in there, it's a bare copper PCB. Doesn't look very mass produced at all. Ah, but yeah, got the pot cleaned out. So I'm just going to put this back together now, do the other one, and we'll be on our way. Sony made in Japan. Well, there we go. First of them all cleaned up and ready to go. Now just to give the second one the same treatment, including a toothbrush in all the little crevices, and we'll be good to go. You can definitely tell these guys have been around. And there we go, a couple of really not too bad looking Sony XS1 auto speakers, complete with the original mounts and brackets. And I just cannot get over the engineering that's gone into these. And look how they've even offset the Sony logo on the left and right speakers to differentiate. Just a nice touch because they could. So that's about it. I need to get moving. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.